All right, y'all. Uh, back in Simeo. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about designing an experiment. So let's say you have a model. Uh, when you run it, so for example, if I fast forward and I run this, this model run uses the same random number stream every time. So my results are going to be the same every time. This is helpful for debugging, right? It's like common random numbers. However, it doesn't really give us a good picture about how the model actually behaves if we were to, you know, feed it multiple different random number streams. We basically want to kind of um, we want to hone in on what the actual system performance is. So let's stop this. The way to do that within Simio is to create an experiment. So you can either do that from Project Home, where you click New Experiment because I'm selected on this model, or I can right click and say New Experiment. All right, so now underneath this model, you can see that I can close the, the drop down. Underneath this model, there's an experiment associated with it. So if I click on experiment, we have some views here. All right, so in general, you have this design view where you can set up your scenario, and then you have this properties of your experiment window, and then uh, your pivot grid and reports are like your results tab. So uh, if I wanted to, I could adjust the number of default replications. So let's say I adjust this up to like 30, for example, um, if I wanted to take advantage of the central limit theorem. If I create a new scenario, I'll just call this test, you can see that it actually created one with 30 because that was my default number of replications. And I can create all sorts of uh, different ones like on this, uh, this next one, if I wanted to adjust this confidence level or the upper percentile, lower percentile, this is just for reporting purposes. So let's select scenario one, just the first one. And then we're going to run this model. What this is going to do is because this is checked, it is going to run 10 versions of the same 12 hour run of this model using these options. So let's click run and see what happens. Down in the status window, you can see that scenario one, the replications one through 10. It doesn't necessarily have to do it in order. You can see that it's not doing it in order because it's doing parallel processing. But this actually, this will go through and fast forward all of your different runs uh, as fast as the computer could possibly handle it. So this obviously was very quick because it's a super simple model uh, and we're only doing 10 runs. So let's look at something like the pivot grid. So this looks familiar. Uh, it looks like the results tab from your model, but it, it reports slightly differently. So let's expand this. In this view, things like the time and system for an online customer, for example, this is reporting the average observed average. So the average time and system for an entity averaged across all 10 scenarios is this result right here. The minimum observed average time and system, so this is one scenario, at least one scenario, had a, an observed average time and system for online customers of 16.55 minutes. And at least one of the scenarios had an average time and system of 47 minutes. So this half width here, the half width, of the average time and system for online customers is 7.37 minutes at the 95% confidence level. So you can see that with uh, different random number streams across our different scenarios, we actually saw a different behavior depending upon the uh, order that the customer showed up in, if there were more um, online customers versus in-store customers, uh, they could have a difference. So it's just helpful for this is how you can read your experimental reports. Um, the main benefit of an experiment is not just to test one set of scenarios. Like if we run this again, if I run the 30, uh, the 30 scenario one, uh, 30 replications, it's not going to give me very different behavior except for maybe decreased half widths. Because the settings, everything is the exact same within inside this, this experiment. So how do we take advantage of the features within Simeo to give us 
uh, some more flexibility with our experimental design. Let's go back into our model. So I clicked on the model here and let's go to definitions and I'm going to create a property. Uh, let's create an expression property. And I'll call this expression property uh, online order rate. OK, so online order rate. Uh, its default value will say is. Um, random dot. Exponential. Of. Uh, five. No, it's not going to like that. We'll just leave it at zero for now. OK. Then. When I go back to my experiment. You can see that this control just showed up. So now I have the ability in this online order rate to adjust for this scenario. Like I said, I can have my uh, arrival rate for, for orders be set to that. Now I could try another scenario where I say, well, what would happen if I actually had a different arrival rate? Let's say it was. Uh, in our arrival time of three minutes. How would that affect the scenario? Now, the only important thing here is your control will show up automatically once you create a property over here in the definitions tab. But this online order rate, it's not actually talking to anything right now. There's nothing in the model that says, hey, uh, this is uh, going to be used in the model. So if we go back to the facility view, and I go to this online source, I would have to adjust my inner arrival time to be, oh, click around here, my inner arrival time to be online order rate. Uh, and then that would, therefore, in my experiment, whenever I run it, this control value would speak to the actual property, right? It would it would uh, populate the property and that property is controlling the behavior of this arrival rate. OK, one last thing with experiments. So I have the ability to create controls, right? This is an, uh, an expression type control. I could create other type of controls like maybe capacities. And any property that I add is going to show up here in the controls tab. Now let's add a response. This response, let's name it um, wait time. OK, and I am going to have it look at the time wait stat. So now I have this time wait stat that is uh, being tracked for each one of my runs. This response will be an output that I can compare uh, across multiple scenarios. The. The specific performance that I'm looking for, just some number to see, like, hey, how does this uh, order rate or arrival rate affect my wait time? And that'd be very useful to just visually see a, a, across multiple different scenarios. Additionally, you can do optimization within side Simeo. So there's a built in. Uh, package called OptQuest. So let me just add that in and I'll talk through some of these things. Yes, it says, do you want to add? If you do, you can't go back. Say OK, now. OptQuest has multiple settings, right? I can I can do something like I, I can set a single objective. What I want to do is I want to find the the scenario that minimizes the wait time. How can I adjust the number of servers to minimize the wait time? That is uh, a fun feature of OpQuest that it will automatically create up to, in this case, 300 scenarios. If I were to click run, it would generate all of the different scenarios and hone in on the minimum wait time. And that is done via the settings here in the experiment itself. All right, so I hope that you found that uh, useful when it comes to experiments. 
um, creating new scenarios and adding responses or, or constraints and the controls that you add all come from their uh, models properties. OK, uh, best of luck and happy modeling.